the hedge maze, another modular craft that's easy to make, fast to reproduce, and has a ton of use in the game table. That's this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're gonna create these really fun and easy hedges that can be used all over your game table. I'm gonna use them for a hedge maze. You see, when I first created my haunted house, I had always envisioned a huge hedge maze in front of it, so that's what this is all about. When I was over in Italy, I was at the top of St. Peter's Dome, and I looked out and I saw this really cool looking hedge that was finally manicured in front of this building as well as a nice hedge garden over by the Colosseum. Both of those is where I took a little bit of inspiration from when I made these. I was also lucky enough to find the material I needed for this craft when I was Christmas shopping uh, about a month or so ago, so I was really happy to stumble across that find. If you wanna help support the channel, head on over to Firelight Fables Candle Company, TWC10 at checkout, get you 10% off your entire order. A small kickback comes to me to help fund the channel. I really appreciate it. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, the Castle Grounds Candle by Firelight Fables Candle Company. How perfect is this candle for this video? All right, now a few months back, I was in Walmart and I happened to be going through the Christmas section and believe it or not, I came across Green Lawn. So <laughs> I picked up uh, three of these and I'm gonna use these in this video as a base material for all of the hedges. Now I tried to find this stuff online, the exact company, and it was really hard to find it. You can probably find it at Walmart, uh, but if not, I'll put a similar item uh, in the description below. You basically want something that has this rubber back because you'll see here in just a second, it's gonna be important because we're gonna wrap it around this foam and it's gonna create a nice rounded top, like a manicured hedge. These dimensions here are important if you wanna stick to a one inch grid. It allows these hedges, once they're complete, to be just about one inch wide, maybe a little bit wider, and six inches, four inches, and three inches long. Now, the hot glue on this, it does adhere really well, and it adheres really quick, so you wanna make sure to have this lined up and ready to go. Now, the nice thing about this framing square is that it is the perfect width for this grass mat. When I make the cut at the exact width of the framing square, I can then wrap it over the foam and it's the perfect height for my hedge. And just putting a little hot glue on the side, we'll wrap it over. And again, you wanna take your time, make sure it's lined up perfectly. You'll see I, I don't really wanna to commit to pressing it on all the way until I know it's lined up evenly because it does stick really well, really quick. Now taking a pair of scissors, you're gonna to wanna to trim the bottom of this so that the grass isn't sticking off the bottom because it's gonna have the hedge not sit flush on the table. Now this is really awesome because we're gonna cover this in a bunch of coarse turf. So just covering the end in a rough cut piece. Again, this isn't a craft that takes a long time. We're just gonna cut something rough to fit to cover the bulk of the foam and we're gonna let the coarse turf do the rest of the work. So we're gonna sit back and uh, now it's just rinse and repeat, make as many of these things as you can with the grass mat that you have. All right, now layering spray. This stuff from World World Scenics is absolutely amazing. It's super sticky, but I find there's always an issue with the pump on the spray. So I bought these little spray bottles and I use these so that when the pump goes bad on them, which happens quite often, I can throw this cheap little bottle out and, uh, and keep moving. You'll see just how sticky this stuff is. You can let it sit or rest just for a minute to let it build up its tackiness, I guess. And then just sprinkling this coarse turf on, you can see how well that's holding already. Now the secret to having all these different layers hold well is layering the colors. So we wanna start with a dark turf, and then we spray again with a glue, and we add some light turf. And we're gonna rinse and repeat that then for the little knock leaves that you'll see here in just a second. It's on this second coat of coarse turf that you wanna make sure you have any of the grass turf below uh, pretty much covered. 
All right, now we hit it with some more spray, adding these medium green knock leaves. And then, yep, one more time, hitting it with that spray and then hitting it with a light dusting of these leaves. These are supposed to represent, you know, maybe some light bouncing off of the top leaves of the bush. All right, now I had to show this. <laughs> After going through many gloves, I realized that I could just stick a barbecue skewer in the bottom of this thing and spin it and rotate it um, to add all of my knock leaves. All right, now using our Anycubic Photon Mono X 6K, I printed off a whole bunch of animal miniatures from Honor Guard Miniatures. You can find him over on My Mini Factory. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go check him out. If there's an animal on this planet that you need, he's probably made it in really awesome detail, so go check him out. Now I wanna add a bunch of these to the hedges and it's gonna offer a really cool little, oh, look at that moment, you know, at the table. So I printed a ton of these off, but I'm gonna show just this one on how I paint it. Let's grab this fox and it's a little bit of a failed print on the tail. So I'm gonna cut him off the rear quarter and I'm going to adhere him to this hedge. But to do so, I gotta drill a hole in the back because we're gonna add a paper clip and we're gonna hold that on with some super glue and some Instaset. Now you can use a handheld pin vise or you can use this really awesome electric pin vise by Let's Resin. Again, I'll have links to them where you can get discounts to all our items on my website, so go check that out. All right, now we just insert the paper clip and add a little Instaset, and this is ready to go. Now, you can pause the video here if you want. You can see the layering that I've done for this Red Fox. This is really fun to paint. And I added, like I said, some rabbits, uh, a woodpecker, a crow, some bluebirds. But uh, we're just going to show this one. And I just went online, got some references, and uh, just painted it up. Now, yeah, I realize that the paintbrush I'm using is way too big for the fine detail that I'm trying to put on this, but I made it work. And if you're wondering why that ranger's there next to the candle, I use him for a scale when I was checking all of the miniatures uh, that I put in this build to make sure that they fit and they look just right. Okay, now this can be a little tricky. <laughs> you want to use some sharp device, poke a hole in there, right through the grass mat, a little Eileen's tacky glue, and you can stick your animals right into the base and then into the foam, and they're not going anywhere. All right, let me know in the comments section below if you're enjoying the smaller style crafts that I've been doing here lately on the channel. Now don't get me wrong, I love my airship, <laughs> I love my haunted house, but there's something to be said about sitting down in one or two craft sessions and having a craft complete. It does feel pretty good. All right, if you wanna help support the channel, consider heading on over to Patreon. It's support there that really helps fund my channel, helps it grow, you can join tiers like The Coven, where you'll gain access to my private Facebook page. You can also join the contractor tier, where I'll email you plans as they are released in my videos. And we can hang out live at night while I'm crafting on Discord. You can also go to my website at www.tabletopwitchcraft.com, and there's all sorts of stuff there for you to check out. 
All of my Amazon affiliate links are there, where you'll see literally everything in my studio I have uploaded to that site. So consider heading on over there, searching that. I even have some discount codes on my affiliates as well, which you'll find on the page. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.